One of my favorite YouTubers is Emergency Awesome Charlie Schneider, who breaks down Game of Thrones and other stories, recapping their top 10 surprises. Today, I'll apply that same format to my 12-week study journey with the SISP exam, which sometimes felt like being in Game of Thrones. If you watch through to the end, you'll see from another movie, Any Given Sunday, a pep talk from Al Pacino as it relates to my number one SISP surprise moment. Two, you'll get some insights on what to expect in your study journey to help maximize your odds of passing on exam day. And three, you'll get some encouragement to persevere through the difficult study process. People sharing their stories on YouTube and Reddit helped me to get through this thing, and I want to amplify this, that experience for you. So grab some popcorn, and let's start at the bottom of the list with my 10th biggest surprise studying for the CISP. Number 10, lockpicking lawyer cuts through physical locks like butter with wrenches and commercially available tools. After reading a destination certification to check out the lockpicking lawyer, if you still think that physical locks are preventative control, I went to the channel to observe him trivially bypassing a variety of strong-looking locks. It's very eyebrow-raising and alarming stuff, a good case study on the need for layered defenses. Number nine, the official study guide has a mobile app. So as I found myself on the road using my phone to study, I did hundreds of questions squinting and scrolling in my phone's browser, an experience that I think was designed for desktop. It wasn't until a week before my exam that I learned this friction could have been avoided if I knew that there was a wildly efficient learning mobile app. So check it out and hopefully it was too late for me, but hopefully it's not too late for you. Number eight, I kept getting the financial questions wrong and I'm an accountant. This sliver of the material that was financial, things like average loss expectancy, was supposed to be my strong area, but I kept making careless mistakes and eating humble pie. So if you're struggling with this topic, you're not alone. Just put in enough reps. Remember to read this question carefully and you'll get it straightened out. Number seven, there was a lot I studied that I didn't see on exam day. Of course, maybe that shouldn't be a surprise because that's the nature of multiple choice exams, not just for this cert, but the other certs and college and university as an example. So we know that while flawed, multiple choice tests are useful for cost efficiency and effectiveness reasons because they can boil down a lot of subject matter into three or four hours and they can make grading more objective, standardized, reliable, and measurable, which allows certification programs to scale. Of course, this approach isn't as good at testing your creativity and problem solving, which could be expressed better in an essay or building something. But keep in mind Harvard's advice that the research shows that education is only 10% of growing yourself faster. So there's 90 more percent to the story regarding our relationships and getting experience. And I've had other videos that talk your ear off about that. Number six, my hardest topics coming from my business background were uh, this list, Kerberos. OAuth versus OpenID versus OpenID Connect, subnetting, object-oriented programming, and multi-threading versus multitasking. I had to do tons of lather, rinse, repeat for these. I got poor scores on them. Watch the lecture, try a practice question, get it wrong, read about it, and repeat. But again, you put in the reps and you'll get where you need to be. Also, with the broad material, it, it's okay to not be expert in, in all the domains. You'll, you'll have weak areas. Number five, a week before I wrote the exam, speaking of multiple choice tests, the Simply CyberCon keynote had a rant called multiple choice certifications need to be destroyed with fire. That's quite the hot take from John Strand and, you know, certainly got my attention a week before I was going to, to write the exam after all that work. Here's a recap of the key points and they're, they're valid points. The industry perpetuates a problematic culture of elitism and exclusivity. Obviously not good. There's a general distrust of higher education's effectiveness in preparing cyber professionals. The high cost of professional cybersecurity training creates a barrier to entry. Multiple choice certs don't necessarily reflect real world skills or abilities like we just talked about. And free or low cost cyber ranges and practical skill assessments can be more valuable than traditional certs. The industry needs to shift from an elitist mindset to a more inclusive and supportive culture. So, Great points, and then John brings some balancing perspective, and uh, I'll play it for you now. The only thing that they're good at is checking to make sure that somebody understands the vocabulary of the industry. And that's where I'll give the CISSP a slight pass, because I look at the CISSP as like, this is the binding language and terminology that we use. Do you know these terms? There's some value in that when we're all sitting around having a conversation. So I'd add to that perspective that education is only 10% of the career development plan, as I've talked about. Also, that some certs are more practitioner-focused. They have case studies 
and uh, you know, real business problems to solve that require, you know, they're not just rote memorization of terminology. That's table stakes that you bring to the table to then help solve those problems in a, in a case study or in a real, in real example. And when I looked at my 70, 20, 10 career development plan, CISP was a great fit for me. It, it helped me uh, for the reasons John mentioned and uh, no hesitation recommending it to others. Number four, CISP surprise. Candidates passing, failing, sometimes singing or crying on the CISP subreddit. I've mentioned in a prior video that this Reddit community was my most valuable and favorite resource. Stories shared by participants there optimized my balance of being scared and hungry while offering advice on the best training approaches. Number three, Thor Peterson teaches me that the OSG, Official Study Guide, is in the easy to mid question category and students should expect to do 5,000 practice questions. So when I heard that, I realized that you know, the grades I was getting in practice scores were for easy mid questions. I had to get into the hard category. Also, I hadn't planned to do 5,000, and so I haven't done the math yet on how many I did, but it was, it was in that ballpark, and, and seeing this lecture from Thor made me kind of increase what I realized was a weak uh, initial study plan. It was more work than I, I thought. Number two, database polyinstantiation. This impressive sounding computer science term is to straight up lie and deceive. That's super different in eyebrow raising for accountants with a fraud fighting and transparency background, but I get it for protecting confidentiality. Certainly is a great example of uh, cybersecurity being a fascinating field. It requires tons of integrative thinking. For more on that topic, check out Canadian Roger Martin. And number one, top CISP surprise. It got ugly for me around question 76 on exam day. I was getting tired. I felt jolts of self-doubt. What if I don't pass? How many more study hours and how many exam attempts is it going to take? How much is it going to cost? This is hard. In that moment, I needed Al Pacino's one inch at a time football pep talk from any given Sunday. We're in hell right now, gentlemen. Believe me. And... We can stay here, get the shit kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back into the light. We can climb out of hell. One inch at a time. And I remembered reading this advice in the CISB subreddit. When you feel flooded, take a beat and just focus on the immediate question. Then the next one, then the next one, then the next one. This exam, just like football and just like life, is a game of inches. Now, what are you gonna do? Thanks for watching. If you found value, please subscribe and good luck getting after it. <laughs>